Good. So uh, we want to look at the person and nature of the Holy Spirit. The person and nature of the Holy Spirit. Uh, one of the marks of our age, one of the marks of our time is uh, the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we've taken that very casually uh, to an extent uh, when we talk of the Spirit of God, uh, uh, you know, it has become casual. We, we, don't, we don't get the importance and the uniqueness of our time. Uh, in Joel chapter 2, Joel uh, prophesied and said, in the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. I will pour out my spirit on the young people. I'll pour out my spirit on the old people. I'll pour out my spirit uh, on servants and maid servants. And the Bible says that will be a mark of the last days. Uh, you know, at times we don't realize the importance of that because we don't understand the context of what, uh, the context of Joel. During the day of Joel, uh, the only people who had the Spirit of God come upon was either a prophet or the priest, and not everybody had the Holy Spirit uh, coming upon them. So, uh, but the mark of our day, the mark of our time is the coming of the Holy Spirit. And, and that really brings a whole change and a whole difference. So Jesus tells the disciples uh, in Matthew, in John chapter 14, uh, that, you know, I go, I go to the Father, but uh, the Holy Spirit will come. The Holy Spirit will come. In fact, in John 15, you know, verses 26, he say, I will pray to the Father. I will pray to the, uh, to the Father that he may send for, uh, to you the Spirit who proceeds from the Father, who proceeds from the Father and comes in my name. You know, that is how intact and how integrate uh, um, uh, the, 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 the Godhead, uh, how the, Holy, uh, the Godhead is working together in, in great synergy and in great uh, uh, unity. So Jesus says the Holy Spirit will come after I have gone. And Jesus tells uh, the disciples in Acts 1 verses 8, he tells them, do not leave Jerusalem. Do not go anywhere. Go and wait for the promise of the Father. Go and wait for the promise of the Father. Because Jesus understood the significance of the Holy Spirit on our lives. Jesus understood. And so, brethren, if Jesus himself being God, if Jesus himself understood the importance of having the Spirit of God in our lives, then we've got to understand it well. You know, Jesus said, you know, I do nothing of my own. I do as I see the Father. And at one time, he cast out some devils, and um, the people in that congregation looked at Jesus and said, look at this man. He's casting out demons by the power of Belzebub. That is the chief demon. But Jesus tells them, you are in error. I am not casting out demons in the name of Belzebub. He said, I do this by the Spirit of God. And he said, this is the finger of the Spirit. And he said, if it is the work of the Spirit, then you don't have any option. So the Holy Spirit has a very significant part in our lives. Has a very significant part in our lives. Brethren, I'm telling you the truth. We cannot survive without the Holy Spirit. We cannot survive without the Holy Spirit. So uh, that's why we are coming back to... Uh, my thing has come off. Let me put it in my pocket then. Okay. I hope you even don't, didn't see that. So the Holy Spirit actually, um, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we cannot survive without the Holy Spirit. That's what I was saying. We cannot survive without the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is not for the Pentecostals. 
The Holy Spirit is for the children of God. Are we together? So I want to share uh, on two points concerning the Holy Spirit. Uh, one, I want us to look at understanding the Trinity because the Holy Spirit actually forms part of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit forms part of the Trinity. And the second thing which I will do very quickly is the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, in abiding. You remember um, my, uh, John 15 verse 5 says, Jesus said, abide in me. And I abide in you, and he said, without me you can do nothing. You know, let me tell you, underline the word, nothing. You can do nothing. And so we want to look at the work of the Holy Spirit in our abiding. You know, the work of the Holy Spirit in our abiding, and that way we'll be able to be fruitful, as Jesus said. Now, uh, what is, let's look at the Godhead. Let's look at the Trinity uh, or the Godhead uh, because we are looking at uh, the person and the nature of the Holy Spirit. You know, there are two things that we are looking at concerning the Holy Spirit. The person, the person of the Holy Spirit and the nature of the Holy Spirit. Now, when we are talking about the Godhead, we are talking about the nature of the Holy Spirit. Actually, in English, we can say the whatness. The whatness. And when we are talking about the person, we are talking about the who. You know? So, uh, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is God. He is not lesser than God the Father, God the Son. The Holy Spirit is, is God. The Holy Spirit is God. And we understand from the scriptures, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 6. The Bible says to 5, the Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That was the declaration of Moses under the inspiration of God. And he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. The same words were repeated by Jesus when he was answering the Jews. He said, hear, O ye Israel, the Lord your God is one. So God is one. Our Christian God is one. You know, he is one. We don't have gods. We are not. Poly, they, uh, poly, uh, we are not polytheistic, okay? We are not polytheistic. We don't, we don't refer to different gods. We have one God. And that is what the Bible says, the Lord, our God, is one. So the oneness or the Godhead or the Trinity is one. We have one God. And uh, unlike some Christian sects that have come up, they have said that uh, Jesus is not God. Uh, some people have said uh, that even the Holy Spirit is not a person. You know, they say that the Holy Spirit is a force. They say that the Holy Spirit is power. But what I want us to look next is that the Holy Spirit is a person, is actually, uh, you know, the third person in the Trinity, as we may uh, like to refer. But, you know, in the Trinity does not have number one, number two, and number three. Okay, so, but for the sake of our understanding, you know, we, we, we've said is the third person. But actually, the Trinity is one, okay? We don't have number one, number two, and number three. However, from the scriptures, uh, we know that Jesus said, you know, I obey the Father. I and the Father is one. Uh, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will come. He will not speak on his own behalf, but he's going to glorify me. You know, we, we see that. But what we see there, other than hierarchy, we are actually seeing the unity of the Trinity. It's not about uh, the hierarchy. It's about the unity of the, spirit, uh, of the, of the Trinity. So, um, in Genesis chapter 1 and verses 26, the Bible says... Then God said, then God said, let us 
make man in our image, in our likeness. I want you to notice, uh, you know, the sequence of, of grammar in this place. Uh, the Bible says, then God, hear ye, hear ho ye Israel, the Lord your God is, is, is one. So God said, one God is speaking here. One God is speaking. And he uses, when it comes to persons, he says, let us. He does not say, and then God said, let me. He said, let us. Talking about one Godhead, but three persons. He's talking about plural, plurality that is in the Trinity. So God said, let us. And then he says again, make man in our image. In our image. Look at this. He does not say in our images. You know, he does not say, okay, we are three. Now let me have, uh, you know, let's make man in our images. No, it means actually God is one in, God is one in, 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 in being, but three in persons, but the three persons are also one. Are you seeing that? So this is a deep revelation. This is a deep revelation which God gave to Moses when actually Moses had gone to the mountain and how, that is how Moses was able to put down Genesis. You know, Moses was not there in creation. Actually, what Moses puts down is what God revealed to him, and that is how he was able to put it down. But it's very interesting how God actually put these things in a more detailed way. He says, let us, and then he says, in our image, he does not use the word in our images. Very interesting indeed. Genesis 3, verse 22 again, which shows us about the Godhead, one Godhead, but um, three personalities. Not personalities, three persons. There is a difference between personalities and, and person, okay? God is not three personalities. God is one person. You know, there are people who think that God is one, but it takes different, for, different persons. He, he comes as the, father, as the son, he comes as the Holy Spirit. No, that's wrong. That is not what you talk about. It's not one person taking up different roles. It is one Godhead having three persons. Are we together? So let's look at Genesis 3 verse 22 again. The Bible says, and the Lord God said, let ma, and the Lord God said, the man has now become like one of us. Very interesting. You hear what the Lord is saying? God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. And the Lord God said, and the Lord God said that the man has now become like one of us. Are you seeing that? So, um, so it's very interesting how, how, you know, from the scriptures, uh, we, we just see the Trinity. Uh, how God is addressing himself as one God, but also in three persons. He addresses himself in, plu uh, in plur uh, plurality. Okay? So, God is one, and as much as one, he is in three persons, and the Holy Spirit is that person, one of those persons in the Trinity. Now, let's come to the second part of what I said I'm going to handle, uh, and that is um, the work of the Holy Spirit in, in our abiding, the work of the Holy Spirit in, in the work of redemption. For your information, you know, the work of redemption, the work of redeeming man to himself is the work of the entire Godhead bodily. You know, the old Godhead, the old Trinity is involved in the work of redemption. And this is the major work of God. In fact, Psalms says, you know, in Psalms, the Bible says, what is man that you are so mindful of? That shows how special we are. Indeed, the Bible says we were created in the image and in the likeness of God. Do you know what? God does not have any other business except the business that is geared 
towards the salvation of man. That shows how important it is. That shows how important we are in the sight of God. So the whole Trinity is involved in the place of, uh, uh, you know, in the work of redemption. Now, what is the work of the Holy Spirit in the place of redemption? The first thing and the most important thing of the work of the Holy Spirit in the work of redemption is the uh, the place of regeneration or what we also call new birth. It's the place of regeneration or the work of new birth. I want us to read from the book of John chapter 3. I want to read from my Bible. Let's go to John chapter 3 from verses 1. Uh, I, I really want you to, to be there. Kindly please, let's, let's go there all of us. John chapter 3 and verses 1, uh, and the Bible says, uh, There was a man named Nicodemus who was a Pharisee and a, a Jewish leader. He was a Pharisee and a Jewish leader. Uh, one night he, he, he went to Jesus and said, Rabbi, uh, we know that God has sent you to teach us. You could not work these miracles unless... Uh, uh, God was with you. I'm reading from the contemporary English version. So take note of that. Jesus replied, verse 3, I tell you for certain that you must be born from above uh, before you can see uh, God's kingdom. Now, uh, it's very interesting here. Uh, Jesus, instead of going round, he goes straight to a very important topic and he tells Nicodemus who was a leader and not only a leader he was a, a Pharisee. The Pharisees were a strict or a stringent group of Jewish sect. They were people who we would have called today or we would have referred to them as Puritans. They were Puritans when it comes to the law and Jesus tells him that uh, you are less Unless you are born from above. Unless you are born from above. Uh, you know, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Other translation says, unless you are born again. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus asked, how can a grown man ever be born a second time? Jesus answered, I tell you for certain that before you can get in.